the easy way to capture ASIO output from your DAW into OBS. And we're going to be using Pro Tools here. And the easy way is the FL Studio ASIO driver. Just head over here, download the trial of FL Studio if you don't own it, and you will get that ASIO driver. You can also download the free screen recording program called OBS Studio, Windows, Mac, and Linux. So go ahead and download FL Studio, install it, restart your computer. Okay, and close down OBS for now. So if you're on Windows, I'm sure you know that capturing audio from Pro Tools or your DAW is notoriously hard to do in a screen capturing program, but it's very easy with the FL Studio driver. What the FL Studio driver does is it routes your DAW audio through your computer audio. So in our case, our Realtek speakers, okay? We can of course change this later on, which we will do. But what we need to do now is open up Pro Tools, which we already have it open here, come up to Setup, Playback Engine, and then select the ASIO driver. That's all you have to do. Of course, once you change it, you'll have to restart, uh, restart your session. Once that's selected, guess what? Your audio will now come right through your computer speakers or whatever interface you have selected. We could also come in here and change this to perhaps our audio interface, which I have a complete audio six connected. That's all I have to change. I don't have to change anything else. So now that's coming out of my studio monitors. All right. So that's how you set that up. Now we need to come in to OBS. Head in here. Very good. So what you need to be aware of in OBS is our desktop sound. Whether we have our complete audio six or our speakers selected, it doesn't matter. I'll just go back to speakers because most people will have speakers. Let me close this down again and open it back up because we switched something. Open it back up. Just be aware that our audio here from our computer will be on the same track as our Pro Tools audio or ASIO audio, as you can see. Okay, not usually a big deal because I don't think a lot of people are streaming Spotify or watching YouTube videos or playing audio on their computer while they're trying to make a tutorial. So it's not really that big of a deal. If it is a big deal for you, I already have a video up about how to use Voice Meter Banana and you can get completely separate audio tracks. But really, this is the easy way and I don't really see a problem uh, with setting it up this way. Okay, so you of course will want a microphone to narrate what you're doing. Right click, add. Audio input capture, give it a name like uh, Mike so you know what it is. Okie dokie. Come in here and if I wanted to use my complete audio six, so for example, I might want to use an XLR microphone, I would choose my audio interface input. It doesn't even have to be a playback device for Windows or Pro Tools, we can still select the input. Uh, you could of course do a 3.5 millimeter mic or something like a webcam microphone or a USB microphone, whatever you want. And you can also have multiples by the way, but there is our microphone. So now I'm assuming here in settings and output, you're on simple, you're on indistinguishable, and you're on MP4 or MOV. Either one of those are fine. Either one of these are fine. And that's all you really need to do simple recordings. And then just start recording, minimize your OBS and do whatever you need to do. Whenever you're done, open up OBS and stop the recording and you will grab your uh, video file. So for example, here's some video files that we have. Now, one thing to be aware of, if you record in simple mode, let's head in here to Media Composer to see this. If you record in simple mode, you will get an output that looks like this, okay? Good quality here on the video, but what you have here is a combination of all of your audio sources. So our microphone, our desktop audio, and our Pro Tools audio are all on the same track. Not a big deal to have desktop audio and Pro Tools audio on the same track, in my opinion, at least for most cases. But it is a big deal to have your voice baked in to a stereo track because now I can't edit that differently. So if instead you want something like this, we can set that up in OBS. Let's go ahead and head back to uh, Pro Tools here because we're simulating doing a Pro Tools tutorial. Come back into OBS here. Of course, we already have our sources set up and whatnot. And let's come into settings. Now we want to go into output 
and switch this to advanced. Come over here to recording. Come down here and your recording format, again, MOV or MP4, doesn't really matter, just depends on, uh, you know, on what you want. Just realize that if you choose MP4 and you crash, you're gonna lose that file. Not a big deal, but just be aware. I usually use MOV, but uh, MP4 is just fine. For audio tracks, select however many audio tracks that you need. So we need, in this case, two. If you need more, choose more. So we will select two. Encoder, I like the hardware encoder, but the X264 is just fine. Don't worry too much about that setting there. For your rate control, you'll probably choose CBR, which is our constant bit rate. You could do variable or you could do CQP. It really depends on what you have access to, but I'll usually do CBR, which is our, again, our constant bit rate. For your bit rate, we're not recording games here. So 50,000 is way too much for a tutorial. There's not that much fast motion or things going on. The truth is you would probably never even get close to that. Okay, as far as your bitrate goes, even if you set it to 50,000, okay. Uh, in reality, 2,500 is usually enough, but if you just want to be safe, 3,000 to 5,000 is a good level. If you really want to be, you know, on the safe, safe side, 10,000 to 20,000 is more than enough. I'll usually leave it on somewhere between 8 and 10,000, but you can, of course, play around with that however you want. Preset, just leave it on default. Profile, I like high, but you might want to do main. Uh, you're not really going to see much difference. It, I'm not going to get into that here. For the level, just leave it on auto. Uh, if you want to choose something and you're on 1080p, 4.1 or 4.2 is fine. If you're on 4K, then of course you want to go 5 or 5.1. GPU, that depends on how many you have. B frames too, all that's fine. Just leave it just like this. Choose apply and come over here to audio. Make sure all your audio tracks are on the highest bit rate. Just to make sure. And of course, apply that. Head over here to audio. Now we're on 48K. So anything we input, we'll come over here to sounds, open this up and say I'm inputting a microphone, which I am. Uh, I would want to right click on that, go to properties and advanced and make sure that's a 48K. Otherwise you might have problems. Okay, same for anything that you're uh, putting in. Make sure that's all on 48K. Same for playback. You may want to come here and just make sure that you're on 48 because we are on 40. If you're on 40 for one, then of course choose 40 for one. But this DAW uh, Pro Tools is on 48, so I'm choosing 48 for everything, all right? Channels are stereo, change that around however you want. Just forget the rest of these settings for now. Video, of course, just choose your default 1920 by 1080 for your frames per second. Again, we're doing tutorials, not games, so 60 is probably way too much. Unless you just want to be that guy who has the 60 frame per second tutorial so you can really see the mouse move around the screen. Uh, you can really see those audio levels. Just boy, it's better than real time, right? If you really need to see those screen redraws in 60 frames per second, okay, you can select it. Just realize that's going to make your video file about double the size. And in reality, 30 is more than enough. You can really get by with 20. But I'll suggest 30 if you want to play around with 48 or 60 just for, you know, just for creativity's sake, go ahead. Of course, choose apply if you change anything. Not going over hotkeys, head into advanced. For your renderer, just choose whatever you want. I just had that option for your color format. I use NV12. It doesn't matter if you change this. Uh, only change it, of course, if you, if you have problems with your colors. All right. For your YUV color space, you'll probably want 709. And for your YUV color range, you'll probably want partial. You can put this on full. If you're going to transcode things later on, it really depends on a lot of, I mean, color space is a gigantic topic. Not going to get into it here. Suffice to say, partial is what I uh, usually use and it looks, uh, it looks great. So you can try those out. I have a longer video where I show partial and full uh, side by side. I mean, come in here to media composer, for example, right? This is uh, control shift F. This is at 10,000 uh, for a bit rate and it's partial and it looks identical to uh, to Pro Tools. This is a video frame right here. So if I come back to Pro Tools, that looks identical. So those are good settings in my opinion. If it looks identical, if it's indistinguishable, then I think it's a pretty good setting. So we're all done here. Of course, choose apply if you uh, change anything around. And that's pretty much all you really need to do. Okay. Came through here, output, we did a recording, audio, very good. So we have our Audio tracks set up again, you can set up more than two if you need to, but we just need two in this case. After that, head into a gear icon, just select it, come down to advanced audio properties, and in here, untick everything, all right, 
and just make sure that you have each track set up to a discrete track. So desktop audio is on one, untick that here. Our microphone is on two. If you have more sources, then set up more, uh, more discrete tracks. I can down mix my mic to mono if I want, because it's a uh, Zoom H1. You don't have to do that. You can, of course, do whatever you want. Select that, and now you're ready to record. So, of course, uh, start recording. Uh, by the way, you can also come down here to Filters, Plus, and you can add plugins right on your live input for your microphone or for any source for that matter. You can also add VST plugins. Not going to get into it, just wanted, uh, just wanted to mention it. You could, of course, do more than one microphone if you wanted to. Audio input capture, I'm not going to actually add one here, but I could do, of course, our uh, webcam microphone. I could add a video capture device and actually put my uh, webcam on screen here as well, which is a, a very popular way for a lot of people to make YouTube videos where they have a webcam, say, in the corner of their screen somewhere. So you can set all of that up within, uh, within OBS. Let me remove that because we don't need it. All right, so now you're ready to start recording. Of course, minimize, do whatever you want, and then when you're done, stop, grab your video file, head into either Pro Tools or uh, an NLE, and this is the kind of file you will get. So this file is, of course, our video, and this track here would be our desktop sounds and our Pro Tools sounds. Remember that whenever we're using the FL Studio driver, our desktop sounds and our Pro Tools sounds or your ASIO sounds will be through the same output. Again, not a huge deal because who's playing YouTube videos while you're recording a tutorial? If you are, use the voice meter method. All right, so this is just the sound from Pro Tools and the desktop, and down here is just the sound from the microphone. So I'm free to edit these tracks uh, individually. You can, of course, uh, pull your audio files or your video files into Pro Tools, and you would have uh, the same thing. This is indeed the easy method to record your ASIO audio into OBS all for free by using that FL Studio driver. Very easy to set up. Just remember, if you need those separate audio tracks in post and you don't want your mic and your Pro Tools audio together, make sure you come into advance and you set things up the way I showed you. And as mentioned earlier, you can always change your playback device. We're on our speakers now. But if you prefer to use your audio interface, just select that from within here. And then we can use our audio interface and of course our studio monitors, our headphones that may be connected to that. And if you wanna learn more about this, I already have a much longer video uh, on this topic. So you can go check that out as well. Once again, links are in the description below.